I have been a Kundalini yoga teacher for nearly 20 years. And I make this particular film because my awareness is that there's an enormous amount of prejudice towards the LGBT community within classes. Now, I understand that some of you may jump up in horror at the thought that you may be thought of as being prejudiced. And I think that maybe it's important just to speak about some of the issues that LGBT people face in spiritual practice. So I may be non-PC at times, for which I'm really sorry, but what's PC changes all the time. I don't mean to be in any way offensive either to people who are not LGBT or to people who are. But I just feel that it's time to bring into a more open space for those of you who teach yoga classes, for those of you who run classes and trainings, to become a little bit more aware of what's going on. I thought of calling this film One in Ten Baby because actually there is a statistic that says one in ten people is from the LGBT community. So what does LGBT stand for? The L is lesbian, the G is gay, the B is bisexual, and the T is transgendered. Now, LGBT, there are more additions to that as, the, as time goes on and the space opens up, but generally at the moment, LGBT is the umbrella term for people who choose to live perhaps outside of gender, outside of heteronormal decisions that are made about gender stereotyping. I'm sure that you don't really think of yourself as being stereotyping, but it's very easy to sit in a class and talk to a woman about her husband. It's very easy to sit in a class and talk to a man about his wife. It's very easy to look at somebody who may be fairly androgynous and make a decision about the fact that they are a man and therefore you might decide that they should have that gender pronoun of he. But I think it's come, it's come to pass now with enough issues being raised in the community of LGBT, that it's really important to become more open to the fact that perhaps swap marriage for committed relationship, swap husband or wife for the use of the word partner, and just in those two things you open up the space enormously for people who are falling within the LGBT community who are within the LGBT community to actually take part and feel really comfortable and included in your class or your training. I run The Mother's Journey, which is a conscious pregnancy teacher training. And in England, when I'm teaching in other countries as well, I'm absolutely determined that it is open to same-sex relationships and really open to the issues that same-sex couples face. And just because perhaps you have no idea about what those issues are, I'm going to take a few minutes to describe those issues. If you happen to be teaching a lesbian couple, two women wanting to have a child, they can't have a happy accident. That is not a possibility. The idea that two women could just fall pregnant does not happen. For two women to choose to have a child is a very big decision. There's an enormous amount involved in that decision, and that decision can include having to choose an embryo from a sperm bank. That decision can include um, finding a friend, in inverted commas, a man, or even part of a gay male, a gay male couple who may agree that they also would like a child, and so there'll be a shared partnership, a shared parenting. They may have asked a friend to donate the sperm. Now, how does that sperm end up in one of the women? How do the women decide who is going to carry the child? The women may have decided perhaps that one of them would give the egg into the other, and that way there's a connection. So if I was in a lesbian partner, in a partnership, and I wanted children with another woman, it may be that I might give my egg into her body for then as an external sperm donation to come in and fertilize the egg. Suddenly, if you start thinking about what goes on, you recognize that if you're not inclusive, if in your classes you're being completely heteronormative, you're making it extraordinarily difficult for two usually fantastically amazing people to take part 
in the teaching, to actually relax into the atmosphere. If when you're teaching your classes and your workshops, you avoid heteronormative, your, part, your husband, your wife, assuming that she has a he and assuming that he has a she, you open up a really wonderful space. And I do honestly understand that you may decide that people like Yogi Bhajan said some really strong things against homosexuality. But Yogi Bhajan was an extraordinarily evolved consciousness. And yes, I've seen the books where the statements are written that he disagreed with homosexuality. I've seen them, and I, and I honestly do wish that they were not still in print. And if I had my way, they'd be, you know, they would be shredded. They wouldn't be available to, to be sold because... I knew Yogi Bhajan and he was open-minded enough that he wouldn't say those things now if he was still alive. And not only that, it's actually now illegal to say those things. It's actually illegal to spread those thought processes around. And so to quote those sayings of things that were said 20, 30, 40 years ago when life was actually very different, there were still lots of LGBT people, but there wasn't the law, there wasn't the openness towards same-sex marriage. I feel it's time to say, enough. If you're a yoga teacher, please accept that if you've got a class of 20 people, probably at least two of them are going to be within the LGBT community. And whatever your religious, cultural, social and moral beliefs are, I don't imagine that you're being employed to teach a class to spread those if they are against something that is actually entitled legal and allowed. So I think my request is that in this day and age, could we all please be slightly kinder and more aware of the fact that all the issues around gender, sexuality and relationships are being very, very changed very, very fast. And it's really important to keep up. And it's really important to allow other people to do what they do in the way that they are enjoying doing it. I think that's what I'd like to say. I may have been offensive and I certainly didn't mean to. And please recognise you've chosen to watch this film. And please recognise next time you turn around to your class and you speak about somebody's husband or wife, unless you actually know that they have a husband or wife, please don't assume that they do. It's very important.